Hello everyone, my name is Shelly Calhoun-Jones and I'm a Principal Technologist here at Cohesity. Today I'm going to show you the new Yara Rules feature with Cohesity DataHawk. But why is this important? Yara is an open source tool designed to identify and classify different types of malware. If you haven't heard of Yara, it stands for yet another recursive acronym. And it was invented by a security researcher at VirusTotal all the way back in 2013. Now, you can find lots of cool information about Yara online. In fact, you can go out and download the tool via GitHub. And there are many example rules and tutorials that you can also find online for free. So if your organization encounters a new variant of ransomware, you can create a Yara rule based off of its unique characteristics and then scan the environment for potential indicators of compromise. DataHawk can now use YAR rules when performing threat scans on snapshots. This process helps keep your environment secure and minimizes the impact of a ransomware attack. In this video, I'll demonstrate how to review an anomaly, perform a threat scan, and import a new YAR rule into Cohesity DataHawk. So right now, we're in the Security Center dashboard. I'm going to go ahead and click on a server which is demonstrating anomalous activity, and we'll use this server for our research. When we click on an anomaly, what it will do is it's going to take us into the anti-ransomware view, and you'll notice that it'll break this information into uh, four unique tabs that you can see up here at the top. Now, right now, we're sitting in the Snapshots tab, and what this does is it gives us a full timeline of our snapshot, including snapshots with abnormal activity. And so we can see that in this example, backup activity was normal until August 17th. And then at that point, Cohesity detected anomalous activity and blocked the snapshot. You'll also notice in this view that we have the ability to see the files that were changed, um, the files that were added, any files that were deleted, as well as other information like the entropy level. But let's go ahead and go over to the Trends tab, and this is going to provide us trends of all of our anomalous, clean, and expired snapshots. And so in this example, we can see that um, more data was written, which you can see over here, more data was written on our anomalous snapshot versus our clean snapshot. So that's something that we're going to want to document because a lot of times with ransomware, it will try to block access to files, and sometimes the infection can even download files and other malware uh, from a command and control server. But let's also go ahead and take a look at the Affected Files tab, because this will show us uh, the files that were affected in between our anomalous and our latest clean snapshot. And uh, I can actually click on this Filters view if I want to specifically look at files that were you know, added or modified, or I could filter it based off of files that were deleted. Now, if we see many files that were added, this could be an indicator of compromise, also known as an IOC. And security professionals use IOCs as breadcrumbs to detect malicious activity early in the attack sequence. Now, an IOC could be network-based, and it could be seen by monitoring traffic, for example, if you see a lot of traffic communicating with a malicious domain or a suspicious IP address, that could be an indicator of compromise. But you can also detect IOCs by observing behavioral patterns in event logs, such as many login attempts. Now, another example is what's called a file-based IOC. And added or modified files may not be malicious, but it's still a good idea to document them. And if there is a file that interests me, such as this uh, core-app file, I have the ability to click on the ellipsis and download this into a forensic environment. So if I want to do further investigation, I can download these files into an isolated environment for further analysis. So that's the Affected Files tab. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Sensitivity tab and um, this is awesome because this allows us to see the data that was impacted. 
One of the cool features of Cohesity Datahawk is that we have the ability to perform data classification scans to quantify the type of data that's in your backup. And so in this example, we can see that we had several files with high sensitivity patterns. Uh, this could be you know, credit card information, it could be passwords, but you know, if we see a large amount of files that have high sensitivity patterns, and if we need to, we can go in and tamp things down a bit. But let's imagine that we have decided to gather more information for this server. We've identified indicators of compromise, and we want to actually go in and perform a threat scan. I could do this by clicking on threat protection, going down to threat detection, and you'll see that we do have some existing scans that we can take a look at here in just a moment. Um, but we can also start a new threat scan. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. And I'm going to do a search for our DH server. Note that you do also have the ability to use an asterisk if you just want to do a simple wildcard search. But for this instance, we're going to go ahead and select one of our DH servers. Okay, so we're ready to select our threat library in YAR rules. But let's take a step back for just a moment and define what a threat library is. Now, a threat library is a repository of security information. It's going to feed in threat intelligence, such as IP addresses, malicious URLs, phishing information, any potential indicator of compromise. But as we all know, the threat landscape continues to evolve, and so that's why it's so important to have the ability to import in our own YAR rules. Now, in this example, we already have a couple YAR rules imported into our instance. And we'll take a look at how to import a new one here in just a little bit, but I want to show you that we also have the ability to select existing YAR rules. So in my environment, we have already imported in a custom threat scan YAR rule into Cohesity Data Hawk. So let me go ahead and click on Save. And then what we're going to do is click Next. And it's going to prompt me and ask me if I want to either scan the most recent snapshot or if I want to select a specific snapshot. Now, in my instance, I'm going to choose the most recent snapshot but I am going to go in here and customize the name of my threat scan. So we'll call this SDJ threat scan DH server. Just make sure to type in a name that's easy to recognize if you're running uh, threat scans on maybe a couple different uh, snapshots. And then while this is running, I want to actually show you an example of a existing scan. And you can see that we did run it uh, with our default library. We also ran it with some custom uh, Yara matches. And in this particular example, we can see that the security risk was high. Okay, so what if I wanted to maybe do some more research on one of these files? Maybe I wanted to uh, do some research here on uh, Bruce, Bruce.bht. What I can do is I can copy this file hash. So I'm going I'm to switch screens here. And then what I can do is I can take this hash. I can paste it in and do a search. So right now I'm on virustotal.com. And you'll notice that this is going to show me uh, which security vendors actually detect this file as a threat. And so we can see that 43 out of 67 um, security vendors, including a sandbox, have flagged this file as malicious. And we can see that it's actually been flagged malicious and that it's an encryptor. So uh, this is a common behavior of ransomware. You know, it will try to go in and encrypt the files. And so in this example, we have detected it, or the security community has detected it as a malicious file. Uh, the details tab is gonna give us more information on things like file hashes, uh, more details about the submission so we can see that this file has been seen out in the wild for a while. Uh, we can also see other details about the file, including header information, as well as other contained resources. Now the relations tab, this is going to show us the domains and the IP addresses that the file attempts to communicate with. 
Now this information can be helpful if you're creating firewall or snort rules to um, block the traffic. Uh, it'll also show us other information such as any dropped files or any files that are dropped on the computer. Uh, sometimes these files are created in a temporary fashion and, the, and then they get deleted afterwards, but these file hashes can also be used to blacklist or reference when you start creating YAR rules. Now, if you want to learn more, uh, you can click on the Behavior tab and it will show you more information uh, such as files or uh, registry keys that were opened. So you can see that VirusTotal will provide you uh, with a lot of helpful information that you can use for improving the security of your environment. All right, let's go ahead and pop back over to DataHop. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our threat detection section. So you can see that my scan from earlier is still running. And uh, I'm going to click on Library, and we're going to import in a new YAR rule. Now, before I do this, I'm going to actually show you a really awesome resource that I'll make sure to include uh, in the link to this video. Uh, these are some example uh, YAR rules that will kind of help get you started with learning more about Yara. Because I know for me personally, I learn by getting hands on and sometimes looking at examples really help um, if you're new to the world of YAR rules. So you can see that there are other examples including Mimikatz. Uh, there's another one here for AlphaCrypt ransomware. This is another older ransomware strain, but you can see how they're built. You can see how they're created and the logic uh, that goes into place uh, when building out YAR rules. Now, I thought this one would be a really good example because you can see that it's actually going to be searching for specific types of criteria. This one's a little bit more basic, but it'll kind of give you an idea of the flow here. So I'm going to go ahead and tab back over to our threat detection library. And we're going to click on Add a YAR rule. So I'm going to click on Upload YAR Files. And we'll go out to my desktop. And we'll go ahead and select my example YAR rule. So I'm just going to tag it with example. So what I can do is I can actually go in and do some housekeeping after this video. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just click on Validate and Save. So this completes the demonstration. We demonstrated how to review an anomaly. We performed a threat scan. We reviewed an existing threat scan. And we took a look at some of the cool features that you can use in VirusTotal, including how to import a new YAR rule into Cohesity Data Hawk. Thanks for watching.